Hey, what's up guys? The Flix here again. Welcome back to Men of War Assault Squad 2 and Rob's Realism Mod. You know, I'm not even gonna comment on how long it's been since I made a video because I did upload a video yesterday and that felt really good because it kind of removes the whole idea of me sitting here talking to you today on how long it's been since I did upload a video, since I did upload a video yesterday. So you, you catch my drift, I, I think that was really necessary. Also, I did give away two city keys so it wasn't completely a waste of time. I hope you guys did get the games or the two copies of post Scriptum and that you do enjoy it. I, I'm hoping to upload more content from Postscriptum over the coming weeks. The, the new update is amazing and overall Postscriptum, Squad, maybe even some Hell at Loose. I want to get back into the FPS side of things. Uh, speaking of first person shooters tomorrow or today I suppose technically it depends on where you live. Uh, Ready or Not is having a, a closed testing event. Uh, which is a really cool tactical shooter, SWAT style, really brutal to some extent. I'm excited, honestly, and I think we're going to try and get more variety on the channel. Yes, there's going to be plenty of Robs, plenty of Warhammer 40k, Great War Realism, uh, you know, uh, Rise of Nationality, Donbass Crisis, Star Wars Galaxy at War, of course, even some uh, Born in the Fire mod. Did I mention Warhammer 40k? I hope I did. And of course... Also, um, perhaps even some Totaler Krieg. I feel like there's so much more in all of these mods, and I'm really excited to give it a try. Um, if I forgot a mod, let me know down in the comment section below. So, um, sometimes that happens. Um, but yeah, so here we are on a map called Lelinga, or something like that. It's um, supposedly, I do believe, a, a hillside in France, and it was made for the Great War Realism mod, but I wanted, the things, I wanted things to be a little bit more intense. Not saying the Great War wasn't intense, but you've got automatic weapons, more automatic weapons rather, at least handheld portable automatic weapons in a larger stretch in World War II. So, uh, we're gonna bring in a unit I don't think I've ever, ever, ever used in a battle in, in Men of War, at least not Rob's Realism mod, and that is the 82nd Airborne. We've done a few with the 101st, we've done a f we've done plenty with Rangers and regular infantry and, mar inf and Marines and stuff from the Pacific, but, um, uh, you know, it's, there's just so many units in this game now. Um, they don't necessarily do anything different, but they definitely add a different feel to the battle. So there's a bunch of new Russian units I would like to use um, for like um, winter scenarios and stuff. But uh, but yeah, guys, this it's a it's a great map. It's a hillside. I've done a few small modifications to it. Um, I've added some more barbed wire here. I've added some t tank obstacles, some tank obstacles to kind of uh, well to give it a more of a World War Two feel. Um, but overall, this is just a really insane. Um, uh, trench uh, network here up this hill um, and, and this map is made by Axel um, we've been on I do believe a few of his uh, other World War One maps they they're overall quite great quality this is really uh, nicely built and I rarely uh, play on maps that are this insane or extreme in terms of ele elevation and uh, terrain differences so guys without further ado I don't think I've I don't think I've spent all too much time in an intro, uh, but it's easy to get carried away. Uh, although, of course, I do retain the right of uh, speaking for as exactly as long as I want. Um, that's something you can never take away from me, even though I do uh, sincerely uh, try and listen to your wishes when making my content. Having that said, guys, I think it's time we start this battle. Um, there's going to be a total of 440 soldiers from the 82nd Airborne attacking the roughly half of that number in German troops defending. It's actually less than half, it's about 140 in total. Um, but they do have the insane advantage of this hill. Um, yeah, let's kick things off. We're also gonna see some armor from the US side of things, as well as some supporting mortar fire. Uh, the Germans also have a medium mortar up the hill. And you know, like uh, guys, it's gonna be a pretty insane battle. Here comes the 82nd, looking beautiful in their all American uniform. And uh, they're attacking with 40 men at a time, so about a platoon, a little bit more. Oh, Jesus, that headshot. Got some BARs laying down, suppressing fire. Here's a 30 caliber machine gun, and the Shermans are now rolling up. Oh, he's been hit so bad he was thrown back. Jesus. Fire, 
Oh, he wasn't even dead. What a terrible way to go. He wasn't even dead. He made a small jump as he was run over by the tank. Oh, damn. Well, that's war for you. So we have a jumbo and a regular M4. Uh, A3, I do believe. Supporting mortars hitting the uh, uh, first line of German defenders. And the Americans here on the left side are starting to make it to the trenches. They're using these tank obstacles. Oh! That's the jumbo down. They're using the uh, trenches and tank obstacles to advance. In fact, I think we're, we're seeing a fairly small number of uh, infantry casualties here on the left side. Uh, that Sherman is definitely flanking up on the left side. Um, and overall, this is looking pretty solid. The second wave has been deployed, so another 40 paratroopers are uh, running in now. These tank obstacles are definitely saving a lot of lives here, providing lots of cover. Oh, and what I find is really interesting is how they have to use this trench to kind of navigate their way up into the trench line. I think that's really awesome. We're going to have a quick look here on the right side. Uh, troops here are a bit closer to the German defenders. They actually have troops down here in the forest because the trench line extends there. There's also an entrance to the um, this uh, the trench line uh, from uh, this trench here. In fact, I don't think it connects to the other trenches. I, I suppose the German defenders were building this, but the Allied advance got too close. And so... Um, they, they had to stop. They did not have time to fortify this with uh, wooden beams, wood beams, and logs, and stones, and sandbags like they have with the other trenches. Uh, so they were they were aiming to extend their line, but they never got there. And we have, uh, yeah, a big concentration of infantry on this side. Um, that Sherman's been knocked out. That was bound to happen sooner or later, but they did give the troops some breathing room. Uh, you guys often ask for up-close uh, perspectives of the troops, so we're going to try and follow the U.S. Airborne as they advance up here on the left side. We're going to tune into the right side a bit later down the line as they're fighting in the forest. It's much harder to spot the troops and to follow the fighting. Over here on the left side, though, we can actually have a good look at the troops now using this trench entrance to gain way up to the hill. This is awesome. Oh! Okay, German mortars. Oh, no, that's a Panzer Shrek. That's the very same... Oh, look, rockets flying by the screen. That's the very same weapon that knocked out the two tanks. Right now being used to target the infantry. Trenches are providing cover. These are AT rockets, not really high explosive, but if you hit them close, you're gonna die. This is really awesome. Okay, so we're getting up the hill now. They're advancing quickly, taking very few casualties moving up. This is a really nice view. We're going to actually have a look at it from the German perspective. So this is where the uh, next line of defenders are. So they're up against SS troops holding this hill. Some battle-hardened, fanatic SS troops. Got G43s, K98s, MG34s, MG42s, MP40s, and STG44s. The Americans have the 30 caliber 1919 Browning, the, uh, um, the BAR, of course, the Garand, the Carbine, and the uh, Thompson submachine gun, as well as the Springfield sniper rifles. A lot of US troops coming up right now, and they're, I love how they're all using this trench for cover. So we're seeing like a stream um, using this vein here. Oop. Small lag freeze there as the next wave is spawned. So the Germans will be receiving troops uh, reinforcing as well. Uh, that is the last two waves of American uh, attackers. There's ten waves in total. Um, will be met with two waves of German defenders. Um, spawning in as well, so that's going to add some more dynamic fighting as we get to the top of the hill. But this is going to be an extremely even fight, I guarantee you right now. This is done in a way where both sides can gain victory. There is no set predetermined winner here, so it all depends on how the soldiers perform. So 
the Americans are right now making their way into the first line of defenders. In fact, they're kind of getting into the second line because the first line is down to its right. And this side has been pummeled by US mortars and a lot of the infantry from the forest or the right flank are now also making their way into the uh, first and second trench line. They're gaining, wow, they got a lot of footing here. Look at all these troops laying down by the trench, providing supporting and covering fire to, to support the attackers on the left flank. It's a bit difficult for the camera angle, but the spectating experience, just look up this hill. Like this kind of this kind of perspective is rare, and it you know mapping is such a big part of how the battles play out and how they feel. And I mean you you're it, the creativity can flow endlessly. You can do anything in the GM editor. There are a few limitations, but none that really uh, none that really make themselves felt or seen. I'm I'm blown away by what you know most mappers today are able to create and it's just wonderful to see and the fact that they still are creating these maps for free releasing them to the community is stunning i i've made it you know i've made this uh, statement many times before and i will make it again if you are a good mapper that wants to make money off your maps contact me somehow steam email whatever if your maps are if they don't even have to be this good but if they're good you know if they're if they've got nice detail to them and nice playability I will definitely hire you to make maps because it allows me to make more videos and it's just you know, a great way to add more maps to the community as well. So on the left side here, the uh, well, the whole platoon has kind of captured this uh, small strong point uh, with a... Oh, but there's still Germans just on the other side of these rocks. This is such a close quarter encounter right now. I think we're going to see some hand grenades be thrown soon. MP40 squad leader doing what he can to hold back the troops. He is surrounded right now. He's got no troops nearby. Uh, all the Germans on the on the oh look, we even got American troops all the way there in the distance on the left flank. Oh, on the left, uh, no, not the left flank, but the right flank on the left side of the screen. Look at him! Oh. Look at him go! Oh, and he's just blown back by a BAR heavy, heavy support weapon. Just throws him back into the trench. Some heavy hitting rounds, and he's dead. Right, so the left side is on this uh, altitude. One could say if we move straight to the right side, we can see that the right side is pretty much on the same level in terms of the hill climb. There's just so much more to look at. But yeah, so we're going to take a look at casualties later. We didn't really see how they fared or how they did getting up the hill, but there's more cover on the right side. They have an, a quicker entrance or a, or, or a shorter path to get into the trench and to counter the German defenders. But as you can tell, it's kind of angled. The left side met the attackers um, down here by the tank obstacles and the second line of uh, barbed wire, whereas the American right flank met them before they even got into the forest. So that just shows you how, how close the German defenders were on uh, opposite sides, or each side of the uh, the attack. Um, so that just created a different dynamic to begin with. But I do like following the left side. The, this, this approach is a little bit more open, a little bit easier to follow. And oh boy, are there a lot of US paratroopers up here right now. I think some of the... We're seeing the last waves deploy right now. I do believe we're approaching the 10 minute mark of, uh, or the 12 minute mark. I do, I do believe I added a two minute uh, delay in between uh, just to give some, get some spacing. But we are approaching the last couple of waves now. And there are still a lot of German defenders remaining. And do remember the Germans have yet to receive their infantry reinforcements. A total of 40 men will be arriving up this, oh, here we go. I do believe this is the first wave of added German SS reinforcements. Thank you guys for watching the first part of this battle. The link to part two will be available in the description box soon, or you can keep an eye on your subscription feed. See you soon again.